Hey everyone, I get this question a lot about how to change the default settings for when you start up Face Fusion. I myself either don't like or can't use some of the defaults, so I definitely need to take advantage of this. And it's quite easy. It's just one file that you have to edit that is there specifically for this reason. But first, let's take a look at the default interface. And regardless of when you see this video, even though the interface may look quite different from this because of newer added features, the same process will apply. You'll just have more options. In fact, this works on older versions too, though I forget when it was added that you could actually do this. I'm not going to go through every single setting that is possible to change, as for the most part, it's the same process for all of the settings. You just need to know what argument you need to add to the file. What file, you might ask? That would be the any file. If you don't know what an any file is, it's a standard configuration file that consists of plain text, so no code. And the letters I and I are the extension of the file and is short for initialization. Now that you know this, the first thing you need to know is its location. It's quite simple. As long as you know where your Face Fusion directory is, it's directly within the Face Fusion directory. And it's the file named facefusion.ini or .ini. If you don't know where your Face Fusion directory is, it should be in your home directory unless you opted to install it somewhere else. Then it's up to you to know where you put it. Once located, you can do anything to it within any normal text editor. Here on a Mac, I'll just right click it and open with text edit. And here's what it looks like. Very simple. Just a list of all the settings that you can configure as your defaults. Before I begin showing what to input, I want to show you an older version of it. Here you can see, although it's not that old at all, there are far fewer options. So more is being added constantly. This also means that when you upgrade Face Fusion locally, that it's a good idea to either check to see if there are changes, or just use the new one that is installed and make a copy of this one as reference before you do the upgrade or new install. I'm going to start off with the few defaults that almost everyone will want to change to some degree and then I'll get more specific on some of the other parts. First, unless you're on an Intel Mac or a pretty old PC, you most likely will not want to choose CPU as your execution provider. Look at the any file. Way towards the bottom is the section titled Execution, where you can see Execution Providers. Depending on the accelerator you prefer, this is where you will type it in. And always, well, almost, we'll get to that later, you will input the option in lowercase. Actually, just go by the way it shows within your interface. So if you have CUDA, Tensor, don't forget the extra R in there, Rockham or ROCM, DirectML, OpenVINO, or like me on the M-Series Mac, CoreML. After the equal sign, be sure to have a space and then type in the processor you prefer. And then two simple ones, directly below are the thread count and Q count. Again, with a space after the equal sign, just type in the numbers that you prefer for your setup. To quickly show you that it is working, and for my own peace of mind, I'm going to quit Face Fusion and start it back up. Now, reloading the page, you can see that I now have Core ML selected instead of CPU and my updated thread count. I didn't change the Q count. The next most important default that I recommend changing is the output path. The default path is a dumpster fire. You shouldn't have to have such a weird random path that is also hidden or invisible. It's all personal as to what your preference may be, but I just recommend having a simple place where you regularly keep your downloads or pictures and videos and make a new folder specific for Face Fusion outputs. Here you can see my path that goes directly to an external hard drive to a Face Fusion specific folder within my video downloads directory. I'm not entirely sure if this works for all operating systems. But if you ever need to know what your path is of a certain directory, you can drag the directory folder or file into a new terminal window, and it will display exactly what the path is for that file or directory. At least that's how I do it on a Mac. Then, just as before, once you know the output path, go ahead and add it to the setting in the any file in the first section named paths. Now let's take a look at the processors and their models. Again, I'm not going to go through every little thing, but I'll give a few examples that will give you all the information you need 
to switch any of them to the defaults you would prefer. Maybe you use Enhancer or another processor constantly and would prefer to have those turned on by default also. In order to have multiple defaults when it's allowed, you just add them into the any file one after the other with a space. Do not use a comma. And literally, the way it is labeled in the application is the way you type it in into the any file, including the underscore and all lowercase. You can insert these in the section titled Processors in the option Processors. But because Face Swapper is already the default, that does not mean that you can leave it out. If you add in Face Enhancer and whatever else, it will remove Face Swapper as one of the selected processors when you start it up. So be sure to add that in there too. And very important, be sure to add them into the any file in the order you want them to process. So make sure that the swapper is before the enhancer, etc. As for picking a model, let's look at face swapper, as that's one that I need to change as I don't like the FP16 version of inswapper. So as I will be switching it to just the regular one, I'll just type in inswapper underscore 128 for the face swapper model which is further down the processors category. And this is literally how you pick the model for any of the processors. In the any file, just find the processor type model you want to add or change and add in the one you want to use based on the exact text of it in the interface. Some of the processors do not have multiple models, so there will not be the option to add anything to these. And while you're still in face swapper, if you're like me, I use almost exclusively the 512 by 512 pixel boost now. 1024 is overkill and a waste of time in my opinion, and very rarely would I go below 512. To change this, find the option for face swapper pixel boost, and change it to the setting you prefer, again exactly as it is displayed in the interface. For me it will be 512x512. No spaces, except for the one after the equal sign as always. This works the same for all of the face debugger items too. Just be sure that you use dashes and the slashes and notice that there are no underscores. The last part that could be different for the processors and many other parts of the interface and any file are when there are numbers. As an example, looking at age modifier, you can choose the age modifier direction. This currently ranges from negative 100 to positive 100. Just put in the number you prefer with the dash for negative numbers. I'm not sure why you'd want a default age modifier number, but you can. You can even have default set for all of the face editor settings, which is just bizarre. I think this works a lot better for the blend levels of face enhancer, or maybe even the colorizer. This should already be more than enough information to figure out how to set all the other default settings, but I'm going to go through a few more quickly. Most of the time, I'm working on videos that are either a single person or it's an obvious choice of the person by them being the closest to the camera. Because of this, I like to set my face selector mode default to one instead of reference. And because of this, normally I would have said to change the face selector order to large to small. But it seems that after mentioning it countless times, they finally figured out that that was a better default than left to right. Another one that I prefer to change is the face mask type. Box is great. But when I'm doing a few videos really quickly and I haven't thought it through what the video entails, a lot of the time there will be items that cross the face, like hair, a gun, a microphone, whatever. This way it's safe to know that it will occlude when needed. Of course, you could set it to multiple masking types and that's up to you. Though I have no idea why you'd ever set the default to region. The only other one that I like to set is the face detector model. I prefer to just have it set to many all of the time. The speed difference is unnoticeable when using, so I figure, why not? I have yet to actually test the face landmarker model, so I can't say for sure on that. Also, it should just be landmark, in all iterations in the interface, and not use landmarker at all. It's not a word and just sounds weird. One kind of odd thing are the options at the end of the interface. The three options are spread across the any instead of them being in a section titled Options. You can find the keep temp towards the middle in frame extraction. You can find skip audio at the end of the section just below that for output creation. And then way at the bottom in the miscellaneous section is where you can find skip download. And because these are binary options, in other words, turned off or on, you need to give it a binary argument. 
So these are either set to true or false. And this, as far as I know, is the one time where you use capitalization at all. Everything else you should easily be able to set yourself with the amazing knowledge I've bestowed upon you here in this video. And to thank me for this knowledge, I know exactly what you can do. Please take a moment to like and subscribe. Leave a comment or ask a question below. Share this with anyone that you think this could help. I appreciate and thank you for watching and hope you have a wonderful day.